It's a beautiful day for baseball. And live from Camelback Ranch in Glendale, Arizona, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Seattle Mariners. Hi again, everybody. This is Charlie Steiner along with Rick Monday. For the Dodgers today, the 10th game of spring training, second start for Julio Urias. A, a chance to see the young left-hander. Now, whether or not he's going to go to extended spring training or be in the big league roster, Dave Roberts said a few days ago, so this young man's really been amazing. Whatever they asked him to do last year, whether it be the starter or out of the bullpen, he said, hey, I'm on board, and he's done it. One quick story also, Corey Seager, not in the lineup today, not really expecting anything uh, that dramatic about the back, but they just want to hold him out for maybe another day or two. And so Seager not in the lineup. Uri is going to pitch a couple of innings this afternoon against the Seattle Mariners. The Mariners finished second last year in the American League West. Of course, the Dodgers have won the National League West four consecutive seasons. Lineup's first pitch coming up next. Set to go here in the Valley of the Sun. Hi, everybody. Rick Monday alongside Charlie Steiner with producer engineer Dwayne McDonald ready to go. And for the Dodgers taking the field in the background. Dodgers with a record of five wins and four losses. And they'll have out Julio Urias on the mound for the, the Dodgers against the visiting Seattle Mariners as we get set to go for baseball here in Glendale. For Urias, making the, the start today, 15 starts last year during the regular season, including three trips out of the bullpen. A record of seven and five, ERA below three and a half. And for Urias, one thing that he was really sensational in doing, fewer hits than innings pitched, 92 and two thirds innings that he worked, but gave up last year just 78 hits and struck out 96 batters. And just a 274 batting average against him. So young man who grew up just about 10 miles away from Culiacan, Mexico, making the outing here this afternoon. The Dodgers, in fact, their lineup will feature Logan Forsythe at the second base position. Justin Turner will bat second, play at third. Franklin Gutierrez in left field. In right is Yasiel Puig. Scott Van Slyke, the designated hitter. Jody Bellinger will be at first, doing the catching. Justin Barnes. Brett Eidner, who's already had a home run this spring in center field, Charlie Culberson will bat in the nine position and playing at shortstop. The Mariners coming on and their their skipper, Scott Service. They improved 15 games last year in the number of wins in the preceding season, but uh, they have missed the postseason for 15 consecutive years. That's Major League Baseball's longest active streak of futility in trying to get to the postseason. So the umpires, Clance Barrett will work the play to call the balls and strikes. 
And uh, filling in around first, second, and third, Mike DeMiro, John Tampain, and one of the rookie umpires, Dan Merzel, in that matchup. All set to go, Dodgers and the Mariners from the Valley of the Sun having a play. Here's Charlie. Well, as you mentioned, Bob, it's ideal baseball playing conditions here in the desert on the fifth day of March. Cloudy skies, a comfortable 72 degrees, an ideal day to do some work. The Mariners playing with a split squad today, so their lineup looks more like a witness protection program from the Dodger point of view than anything else. But Gerard Dyson, who the Dodgers have seen, of course, with the Kansas City Royals, leads it off and takes a strike. It's nothing in one. So the Dodgers had five up and four down so far this spring. Beaten by the Cubs yesterday, nine to three. But there was some good news that came out of yesterday's performance. Kenta Maeda reasonably happy with the way he worked, and more importantly, Dave Roberts thrilled with his piece of work. And Shea Spitzbarth has been the talk of spring. Inevitably, there's going to be a player or two, and who is this guy? And Spitzbarth, another outstanding pitching performance yesterday late in the game. Uri is missing outside. One ball, two strikes to Dyson with a fellow named Taylor Motter, shortstop on deck. Now the one-two on the way. Swung on and miss. Strike three. So Urias strikes out Dyson, and we are underway. Well, the young left-hander just so talented, and uh, he gets the first man, strikes him out. Even when uh, Urias was five years of age, those kids that he grew up with playing, as they thought he was much older because he just had that ability. Already the hand-eye coordination, a little bit bigger in size at, at that age as well, but uh, they're still looking at that birth certificate and say, hey, wait a minute, this kid's only this age and pitching this well? He's 20 as Motter steps in. Right-handed hitting shortstop, and he takes a strike. It's nothing in one. So Urias pitched an inning on Tuesday, likely to go two innings today. And, of course, opening day. Monday, April the 3rd, at home against the San Diego Padres, as Urias, like a pitching machine, delivers a strike. It's nothing in two. That's a good curveball, too. Just a power curve. Nothing dainty about it. The thing about her is, again, you watch him on a day-to-day -day basis, the lefty into the wind, just inside and low, one and two. He walks around fully confident, but not to the point where, ooh, who is this guy? You just know he's got a presence, whether he's on the field and top of the mound or just walking through the clubhouse. And there's a fastball and a ground ball to third. Backhanded by Justin Turner. Goes on to Cody Bellinger. And there's two out. Yeah, I touched upon it in the pregame show. He does indeed remind me a lot of uh, a young Fernando Valenzuela who had the composure, came on as like he had already seen uh, at the major league level what can happen and how you kind of prepare for it. He's uh, really something to watch. Mitch Hanniger stepping in for the Mariners. Off to a good start this spring at 229 last year. Right handed hitting right fielder. Urias delivers low and outside, one ball, and no strikes. Speaking of Fernando, when Urias made his exhibition debut two years ago, it was it was a thrill to be standing next to Fernando as he watched Urias in his very first inning. Here's the 1-0. There's a strike on the outside corner, one and one. And I remember his initial reaction as soon as he finished watching Urias pitch his first inning in the spring two years ago. Ooh. That was all you needed to hear. Ooh. Urias missing outside and low and it's two and one to Mitch Henniger. Defensively for the Dodgers this afternoon Turner's at third Charlie Culberson at short a balky back continues to uh, bother Corey Seager now the two one high and away three and one Seager doesn't think it's terribly uh, long term. In fact, they hope to have him back out in a couple of days. Logan, Logan Forsyth at second base. Cody Bellinger is at first. Franklin Gutierrez in left. Brett Eibner in center. Yasiel Puig in right. Austin Barnes is catching the deck. Now the 3-1 to Hanniger. Swing and a grounder foul to the left. And it's 3-2. and two. There is absolutely no breeze whatsoever. 72 degrees and a little more humid than you might expect here in the desert. All the way up to 
out here. That's a, a sweat box. Here's a 3-2. Call strike three outside corner. Perfect inning for Urias. He strikes out two. We'll go to the bottom half of the first from Glendale. Mariners and Dodgers are coming up. The Lexus come on. Order as we go to the bottom half of the first. Logan Forsythe, who figures to be the everyday leadoff hitter at second base, will be followed by Justin Turner, three for six so far this spring. And Franklin Gutierrez still looking for his first hit for the Dodgers. In left field, hitting third. Puig in the cleanup spot. Van Slyke, who has really done a marvelous job in reconstructing his body, missing most of last season, looks great this spring. And he'll be hitting fifth as a DH. Bellinger, Barnes. Then you've got Brett Eibner in center field hitting eighth and Culberson batting ninth. Forsyth, so far so good with a ground ball to second base. Where Smith picks it up and throws him out. Tyler Smith. So Andrew Moore making the start between A and double A last year. Outstanding numbers, 12 up, four down. An ERA of two and two thirds. 163 innings. He struck out 133 while walking 31. Well, Justin Turner gets a nice ovation as he steps into the batter's box. Turner, of course, re-signing with the Dodgers in the offseason. All the all the guys they wanted back came back. Whether it was Kenley Jansen, Justin Turner, Bridge Hill. And Chase Utley, there's a strike to Turner. One ball, one strike. And then you add Gutierrez, who's on deck, and Logan Forsythe. The Dodgers, he's hit by a pitch. Turner just brushed him on the part of the plate. So the Dodgers, who got by on their depth last year, 55 different players putting together a 91 game winning season well the depth got deeper and the depth paid off and I think there's more and more teams now are looking at it especially what the Dodgers are able to do 206 different roster changes last year because of the injuries so it's not just the 40 man roster I mean it's a, a much more depth than that throughout the entire organization now here's Gutierrez hard ground ball to third and a 5-4-3 double play is on the way and that's that Zach Shank, Tyler Smith, and the receiving end, Danny Valencia. So good here is now hitless in his first 11 at bats this spring for the Dodgers. No scores. We go to the second.
work his second inning. He retired the Mariners in order on 14 pitches and a couple of punch outs in the first. Danny Valencia will lead it off right handed hitting first base. The Mariners as Mo mentioned has been 15 seasons without making it to the postseason. That's the longest such streak in Major League Baseball. So the GM Jerry Depoto, the one time Angel GM, try to turn over a new leaf. Valencia takes a strike from Urias. 15 pitches, 10 for strike so far for the young left hand. Urias into the wind. The 0 1 is outside at low. One ball and one strike. Terrific story about um, Julio Urias at an early age. And his dad, Carlos, played one year pro ball in the Mexican League. But his dad taught him, along with his grandfather, that to pitch and be effective, you have to learn and have confidence to pitch in. The 1 1 is fouled off to the right and out of play, 1 and 2. So the exact age, not sure of. But what would happen is that the grandfather would be the catcher. His father would stand at home plate. Now he'd have a glove on one of his hands, but he'd stand there like a hitter. And he would teach Julio, look, you have to pitch inside. You have to pitch inside. Julio said he was scared to death. He was afraid he was going to hit his father with a pitch. Here's the one, two inside and low. Two balls, two strikes. Valencia has to skip out of the way. So on cue, talking about pitching inside, and he comes close to plucking Valencia. But what it comes down to is that there are a lot of pitchers that don't feel confident in pitching hitters inside. The 2-2. Two -two. Grounded to short. Culberson picks it up. Throws high, and Bellinger is able to snare it down. Valencia's retired first out of the second. Yesterday, Culberson playing at third base had a throwing error. Throwing high over to first base. Uh, the Dodgers each of the last two games, actually uh, the last three games, they have not played what Dave Roberts will refer to as crisply played baseball. The cutoffs and the relays have not been really right on the money. There's been a couple of misfires, but to have it early, that puts it on the agenda to work on the next day. Now the hitter, Mike Zanino. He takes a strike, nothing in one. Zanino has a career batting average of 195. He's got nowhere to go but up. Takes a strike. And it's nothing in two. Normally have an average like that. The next thing is good defense. It better be. On 0 and 2, Zanino takes inside and low one ball and two strikes. Well, he's out of the University of Florida. He was originally an infielder. He has struck out in his big league career 34% of the time. He's got a 340 strikeout average and a 195 batting average. Here's the 1 2 outside. Two balls and two strikes. So he's figuring to be the uh, the starting catcher for the Mariners unless Chooch one time Dodger fly ball headed toward the left field corner and it's foul. Carlos Ruiz went up to Seattle with the trade from the Dodgers. Came across a number a couple of days ago last year during the regular season just over 30 percent of all plate appearances failed to produce a fair ball instead is either a strikeout a walk or hit by pitch over 30 percent. Here's a 2 2 breaking ball just high three and two. So that set the all time record. It was up 19 percent from a 20 year low of just over 25 percent back in 2005. But we're seeing now an increase of the number of strikeouts. Three two the pitch on the way to Zanino pops it up right side. Bellinger near the first base dugout leaning in and he can't quite reach it. How about overall starting pitchers last year regular season struck out over 15 percent of all the batters that they face. I mean you start to look at the importance of pitching to shut down the big bats to be able to get you out of a jam. And the strikeouts uh, has been a big weapon in last year. I mean it was just all time numbers. 
especially the Dodgers. The Dodger pitching staff last year, 1,510 strikeouts. That the set the major league all-time record for a year. As Urias misses inside a low ball, four Zanino takes a walk. One out, one on in the second. We have no score. There was another record last year, and I, I think it goes hand in hand with now the importance of bullpens. We're seeing starting pitching going, well, not averaging seven innings. Actually, not even averaging a lot of the times six innings in a ballgame. And the left-handed hitting Ben Gamble with a fly ball to left field. The easy play for Gutierrez, the one-time Mariner, makes the catch, and there's two out. But last year was also another record. The number or percentage of batters faced by relief pitchers last year. So we're seeing that that is becoming a common denominator. Is it making sure that you have a strong bullpen? Dodgers have beefed it up. Sergio Romo now is going to be the setup guy. Give the ball to Kenley Jansen. So the bullpens, I mean, they play, play a larger and larger role with the emphasis now. Right-handed hitting Steve Barron takes a strike. It's nothing in one Barron, right-handed hitter. Again, uh, the Mariners split squad today. We've got half empty, half full, and the team they sent over here is half empty. Here's the 0-1. Outside. One ball, one strike. Steve Barron signed out of high school. He had committed, had he not signed, he had committed to accept a baseball scholarship to Duke. The 1-1, one, one, fouls it off to the right, 1-2. and two. So the Mariners, once the regular season kicks in, and they feel pretty good about where they are in the American League West this year. Uh, Gene Segura, Gamel, who just flied to left in left field. You got Cano and Cruz, Kyle Seeger, Leonis Martin. So they've got some players. Unfortunately, they didn't bring them over here today. One ball, two strikes. A lot of split squad games for all the clubs. Here's a one two a rounder foul up the first baseline. We've got the World Baseball Classic and a lot of players will be leaving their respective team. Some of those some of those players leaving also to go to the WBC we're going to see and it's a perfect opportunity. It's a great spring if you're a young player or maybe on one of those players is just on the cusp. Do you have a job a veteran player trying to hang on or not. Now the one two again fouled off to the right. For instance Ike Davis who we saw earlier in the week he's in Korea now playing for uh, the Israeli team. Rob Seganen will be off for Team Italy shortly. Kike Hernandez Team Puerto Rico and Team Mexico will have three Dodgers Sergio Romo Alex Verdugo and Adrian Gonzalez. Marius misses low and inside two balls two strikes two out. Mike Zanino is at first being held on by, by a Cody Bellinger. I was talking about his dad earlier today with one of the writers. Clay Bellinger, utility player for the Yankees. Now the 2-2. Two -two. High and away, 3-2. and two, So the ease with which Urias through in the first inning a little more uh, strenuous here in the second. Yeah Barnes just out in front just reminding guys look uh, three and two two out runners going to be going Bellinger now plays behind the bag at first behind the runner. Culberson the shortstop Forsyth at second. Urias leaning over. And just as he's about to get in his motion he steps off the rubber. the 36th pitch of the game thrown by Urias now here it comes and a foul off to the right and out of play so Barron is making a nuisance of himself and Barron has not really barreled up the ball with any authority he's been late on everything that he's made contact with and the outfield has gone over to the right side to, as a result of seeing foul ball foul ball going off to the right 
14 pitches in the first inning. He's up to 36 now, and here comes the 37th. Barron fouls it off his foot. Dodgers bullpen already at work. After Urias, we'll see, among others, Josh Spores. Yasiel Sierra. Fun to see that. 25 year old Cuban. Josh Raven. Sergio Romo. And the 10th pitch of the at bat. Well, there'll be 11. And again, just uh, fouled it off. For Barron, two years ago, before he came to spring training, he had one of those odd injuries. He was hungry. He grabbed some frozen hamburger patties. Oops. Knife slipped five no. stitches. Late arrival in spring training. 3 balls, 2 strikes, 2 outs. Zanino will be off and running with the pitch. Here it comes. There he goes and a ground ball to short. Nice easy hop for Culberson. Throws across the diamond and the is over. No runs, no hits a walk and a band left. When we come back in the bottom of the second, Puig, Van Slyke, and Bellinger will hit. No score from Glendale. Second, see the best baseball players in the world chase a title for their country when the World Baseball Classic returns to Dodger Stadium from March 20th to the 22nd. Queen takes low on outside. One ball, no strikes. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash WBC. Queen three for 11 so far this spring. And the pitch on the way. A little number come back. Easy play for Moore. Throws to first. Puig retired. First out of the second. Now here's Scott Van Slyke. Slick. A 14th round pick of the Dodgers back in 2005. 6 4 2 20. We're talking earlier. He's in as good a physical shape as we've seen him since he came to the ball club more than a decade ago. Takes a strike on the outside corner and it's nothing in one. Well, we had heard from the coaches even before the games had started here in spring training that uh, he was hitting the ball very loud. What's that mean? Well, for Dave Robertson companies that swinging the bat exceptionally well, handling ball not just out away from him, but inside. He takes a strike on the outside corner, one and two. And the reason I bring up Charlie handling it inside, remember Van Slyke's coming off of wrist surgery. And there's a trust value. One and two, a fastball up and in, two and two. Because other people, other clubs know is that, hey, this guy had a, a wrist injury. What I'm going to do? Probably jam him to see, well, can he handle the ball inside? The 2-2 two -two is high, three balls, two strikes. And the answer to this particular point, yes, he's four for 11. He's knocked in four runs. 
Cool. Van Slyke in his fifth big league season pops it foul behind the plate and out of play. And if you think coming back from an injury that the opposing clubs are not going to test you, if it's been a wrist, if it's been a hand, but last year just a lost cause for him. And there's a ground ball base hit in the center field. Your Honor, I rest my case. So he fouls off a couple of pitches, moves the count three and two, then fouled off a three two pitch before he gets the line drive single. And now here comes Cody Bellinger. So Van Slyke, it was a season just to forget last year. Back, wrist, 102 at bats. A career 249 hitter. So he's at first base, one out, one on. And Bellinger, who is three for 13 this spring, left-handed hitter, close to the plate at an open stance, takes a strike on the outside corner. It's nothing in one. Yeah, Bellinger's a big guy. He stands six four to begin with. He was most impressive. We saw him last year, and he played a lot. And what was amazing is it shows a very good glove at first base, and then he played very well in center field a few games. The 0-1 is a strike. No balls and two strikes. The thinking is that Bellinger will spend most, if not all, of the season at AAA just to get ready. He's so close to being big league ready. Of course, the Dodgers have uh, Adrian Gonzalez at first and about nine outfielders competing. Bellinger swings and misses, struck out on a high fastball. So Moore, his first strikeout, two out. Van Slyke still at first. Austin Barnes coming up. But when other teams call the Dodgers about possibly making a move, inevitably, Bellinger's name comes up, and just as inevitably, the Dodgers say thanks, but no thanks. Austin Barnes, three for 10 this spring, stepping in. Getting a chance to be the understudy to Yasmani Grandal takes a ball outside and low. One ball, no strikes, two out. Van Slyke, who's single to centers at first base. No score in the bottom of the second. And if it is going to be Barnes as the uh, the backup catcher, remember he can also play second base. Went to Arizona State University as a second baseman, and we've seen him in the outfield on top of it. So, again, it's another dimension the Dodgers might have as far as versatility. Barnes fouls it back. And it's one ball, one strike. It's a good swing right there. The ball up and out over the plate. So the Dodgers with an enormous number of potential outfielders. And you've got uh, Kike Hernandez, Chris Taylor, Charlie Culberson for a utility role perhaps. And a pop up into short right field. The second baseman Smith is camped underneath it. Makes the catch. That will end the inning. No runs, one hit, the single by Van Slyke. No scores, we go to the third.
the Los Angeles Dodgers and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Dodgers. This afternoon's game presented by Arco. Arco, quality top tier gas for less. Charlie Sunderick Monday, Dwight McDonald, of course, is riding the controls and riding us sometimes. Here in the booth today, Romo, Sergio Romo, 38 appearances with the Giants. You know, there was, uh, I don't know, question, but certainly curiosity how Romo would blend in with the Dodgers after being such a nemesis for so long. And first day he walked in, almost a month ago, it was like he felt at home, grew up a Dodger fan, and has been warmly greeted and embraced, and Dodgers are thrilled to have him. Changes speeds exceptionally well. He's now 34 out of Brawley. He can throw the same pitch five consecutive pitches, but they all look a little different. And flustered hitters all look the same. Tyler Smith, right-handed hitting second baseman, leading it off here in the third, takes a strike. It's nothing and one. Played at AAA last year and has three hits this spring. Zach Schenk is on deck. Big, slow, breaking ball for a strike. Nothing and two. Romo said that uh, he was a little tentative when he first walked into the Dodger locker room, not knowing how he was going to be received, having pitched previously with the Giants, successfully, we might add. And he said it was like I was entering a room with friends. No balls, two strikes. Breaking ball, swung on and missed strike for just as you had described it. Romo on three pitches, all identical. Uh, gets Smith striking out, swinging first down. He comes down to different arm angles and different breaks. One breaking ball might be kind of a three-quarters break over the top. The next one, he'll drop down from the side. He'll change speeds. He'll turn it over. So he's always looking for the edge, and he puts a premium on throwing consistently to the plate, to the strike zone, but he likes to tickle the corners. Zach Shank is the hitter. And he takes a strike, nothing in one, right-handed hitting third baseman. A double and triple A last year at 290. And it's three for five so far this spring. Again, as we mentioned, the Mariners split squad today. And the Dodgers, by and large, are playing their other half. Here's the 0-1. And a ground ball up the middle, pass to diving Culberson into center field for a base hit. Zach Schenk is aboard with a one-out single to center. Now Dyson, the former Royal, coming up. Of course, a speed merchant and an outstanding defender. Taylor Motter is on deck. Justin Turner in on the grass at third. Bellinger holding Shank at first. Dyson swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. There's a spot for infielders with Dyson up there. You want to make sure as you realize that here's a guy that can fly. I mean, he has stolen 30-some bases in any particular year that he's been able to, uh, to remain healthy. He signed out of Southwest Mississippi Community College. In terms of pure base speed, He's about as fast as anybody in the game. He takes inside and low, one and one. Well, he was with the Royals, and he was named as the Willie Wilson base runner of the year a few years ago when he was over there in the minor league systems. Of course, Lorenzo Cain is their center fielder. Dyson became a fourth outfielder, essentially. He was available to be traded. And of course, it's Safeco. It's a spacious outfield. As it was in Kansas City. So he's a valuable commodity, leadoff hitter, outstanding defender. He'll steal some bases. Here's a 2 1. Grounded foul up the first baseline. 
And it's two and two. The speed gets a lot of attention. And for Dyson, on opening day 2011, he made history, he became the first 50th round pick to appear in an opening day lineup. Since the first year player draft was limited to 50 rounds back in 1998. So there are a lot of players that were drafted in front of him, but he made it good. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Zach Shank at first base being held on by Bellinger. Romo out of the stretch, and here's the pitch. Little number up the third base line. Turner picks it up, throws him out. With Turner being in on the infield grass, protecting against the bunt, a little number right at JT. Shank goes to second, two outs. Now Taylor Motter coming up. Hello Motter, hello Fodder. Motter bounced to third in his first at bat. We're scoreless, each team with a hit. Romo on in relief of Urias who went two innings, struck out two and walked a batter. Big slow slider for a strike from Romo. It's nothing in one to Taylor Motter. He's a karaoke guy. Specializes in Taylor Swift's Shake It Off. He was asked to do that a couple of years ago in, uh, in the locker room meetings in spring training. Dave Roberts has guys that have different skills, whether it be playing the piano or singing in their locker room meetings. Romo on 0 and 1 and Motter. Lip syncing, but missing a breaking ball badly. It's nothing in two. Taylor Swift and Taylor Motter. Two out. Mitch Hanniger is on deck. The 0 2 from Romo. Breaking ball just low. Two balls and two strikes. Lance Barrett calling balls and strikes today. Spring training is such when you're not quite sure whether you're going to see three umpires or four. Sometimes there's four listed. Three show up. Today, three were listed and four showed up. And the breaking ball swung on and missed strike three. Romo in midseason form. Strikes out two, leaves one. No score. We go to the bottom of the third. I won this fifth. AMPM is the official convenience store of the Los Angeles Dodgers. AMPM, too much good stuff. Overcast, 72 degrees. Very comfortable day in the desert. Edwin Diaz 
who can strike him out in 51 and two thirds last year he struck out 88 and walked 15 in 49 appearances and he delivers a fastball with some mustard on it a strike to Brett Eibner and it's nothing in one Eibner Culberson and Logan Forsyth to hit for the Dodgers here in the bottom of the third no score either side with a hit and there's a swing and a miss, and it's nothing in two to Eibner, who's three for 13 at a home run. Yeah, that home run he hit was long distance. 2010, he was the number two pick by the Kansas City Royals out of the University of Arkansas. Yeah, Diaz delivers high, and it's one and two. But for Eibner trying to stay healthy, he's been at the minor league level for six years. He's had an assortment of injuries. Originally, the Astros had drafted him. 2007 is their number four pick as a pitcher. The one two is outside and low two and two. And even as, uh, as late, as, late as last year in September, the Royals were saying, hey, wait a minute. Do we want to still think about putting Eibner on the mound? He has a tremendously strong throwing arm. Big fella, 6'4, 215. Now the 2 2. Eibner takes a breaking ball call, strike three. Down on strikes, first out of the third. Now Charlie Culberson. Who we came to learn last year after his folklorish home run. is a big baseball memorabilia collector and a ground ball to short Taylor Motter picks it up and throws him out there's two out now Culperson with that home run and the bat signed by Vin that's real memorabilia his own memory for goodness sake and videotape to go with it mm -hmm. so two out nobody on Logan Forsyth coming up Forsyth bounced to second base in his first at bat. He's four out of eight this spring. He takes inside and low one ball and no strikes. Forsyth is a Tennessean born in Memphis, lives in Franklin, Tennessee, takes a strike. That is one and one. Six one two oh five. He's now 30. Franklin just outside of Nashville. Here's the 1 1. Swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Made 125 starts last year for the Rays when he hit 264. Hit 20 home runs, knocked in 76. Now the 1 2, high and inside. The closely cropped beard and he nearly got a shave on that pitch. Well, Diaz has not been afraid to come inside. He throws hard. Diaz out of Puerto Rico. Cagua's Military Academy. The 2-2. Two -two. Outside a low 3-2. A hard slider. Well, he learned that slider from his cousin. Remember Jose Melendez? He was in the big laser parts of five seasons. The Mariners, the Padres, and the Boston Red Sox. So Melendez, his cousin. On three and two with two out, Forsyth pops it foul to the right and out of play. Forsyth just one of those gritty type players. Everywhere that he's gone, that's what managers have talked about. That's what teammates have talked about. We saw him in 2011, 12, and 13. Well, he's playing with the, the Padres. Hard ground ball to third on the second hop. Zach Shank picks it up, throws it across the diamond. Dodgers retired in order. We head to the fourth. No score from Glendale.
First time we're laying eyes on him, Yasiel Sierra. And this is a highly prized prospect, lean right-hander. 6'1", 171. From Cuba. Made 30 appearances at single and double A for the Dodgers last year. First pitches up there in a hurry for a just missing outside one ball, no strikes. It was officially signed a little more than a year ago. The 1 0 is a swing and a foul into the dirt. That is one ball, one strike to Mitch Henniger. I right, pitch for the Cuban national uh, team. Part of that gold medal. 2014 Caribbean Games, American Central American uh, Games as well in Mexico. Missing low and outside is now two and one. Hanniger with Danny Valencia on deck and Mike Zanino to follow. Charlie, we understand fastball reached about 97, hard slider. Missing way outside is now three and one. That pitch in the dirt got a piece of the right arm of Austin Barnes. Well, what we had heard also is that Sierra had a tendency to, to drop down different arm angles. The Dodgers are trying to get him to more consistent relief. And the pitch is outside ball four. So a leadoff walk to Hanniger here in the fourth inning. So for Rick Honeycutt, he's the rest of the uh, pitching coaching staff trying to refine the mechanics. There's no question on the ability. Boy, he has a, just a lightning quick arm. He throws like a shorter version of Ramon Martinez. Long, lanky, angular. Set at the belt. Valencia right-handed hitter takes a strike and it's nothing in one. Mike Zanino on deck. Toss to first base and Henniger back with a head first slot. Next broadcast, radio only on Tuesday. And it'll be the Giants. The Morongo pregame at 11.30 Pacific time. First pitch, 12.05. Next Sportsnet LA broadcast, Friday. The Rangers will be here. And that'll be a simulcast as well. No balls, two strikes to Danny Valencia. On 0 and 2, Hanniger a short lead at first. Let's see our fire is over and a head first slide as the returning Hanniger beats the tag. Center fielder Brett Eibner a couple of steps toward right. Forsyth cheating towards second as Sierra misses with a breaking ball. It's one and two. Sierra, a couple of different stops last year, began at Rancho Cucamonga 20 games and then moved to Tulsa, where he pitched in 10. Made 13 starts at Rancho and only 10 relief appearances, no starts at all at Tulsa. Now the one two is outside two balls two strikes. So he's throwing a lot of pitches here to the first two batters. A lot of organizations were interested and they thought that he was uh, not too far from being major league pitch ready. Defected from Cuba right after the uh, 2015 season ended. And a toss to first base. And Hanniger is back with a head first slide. Two balls, two strikes. Sierra set at the belt, and here's pitch. High and away. Three and two over through that one. Sierra, his stats in Cuba in five years, 16 and 21. 
And an ERA of four and a quarter in 300 innings of work. 131 appearances, 25 starts. Now time called before he unleashes the pitch. Walked a lot of batters in Cuba. 166 in 300 innings. That's why they're trying to, to get the, the release point. You know, different arm angles. It's all well and good if you throw strikes, but not if you're walking a lot of people. On three and two, the runner goes and a swing and a grounder into the Dodger dugout. And so Valencia will see another pitch. He also had 11 wild pitches last year. So they love the arm. There's no question about that. And so he's, he's a work in progress. But boy, it's a, from a coaching standpoint, it's delightful to work with somebody that has the ability that he has. So he can throw hard, but getting from point A to point B has been a bit of a problem. On three and two, runner goes again. Ground ball into left field for a base hit. So Hanniger holds at second base. Valencia is aboard with the single to left. And that'll bring up Mike Zanino. The hit into left, into left field. Right off the shoe tops. Big savings are going on now at Nissan now. Hurry in for great offers on their entire lineup available with Intelligent Safety Shield Technologies. The choice is clear. Shop at your local Nissan dealer and at ChooseNissan.com. Now Zanino takes a strike, nothing in one. Walked in his first at bat. One is on the way. Chopper slowly hit to short. Culberson, Forsyth, from Bellum. 6-4-3, double play. One of the things we just notice about Forsyth, he's got a good catch and release at second base. Yeah, very quick with the hands. And he also got a very good feed to work with from Charlie Culberson. So important is it to work in that, that double play combination, knowing where the other guy prefers the ball. But for Forsythe, not that far off the bag to begin with, but he knows he has time. He catches it, turns, and throws in a hurry. And so with two out, and Hanniger going to third base, the left-handed hitting Ben Gamble steps in, and he takes a strike. It's nothing in one. And Charlie, he threw in a hurry, but, but it wasn't those things where he rushed the throw. It just came naturally. Here's the 0-1, ground ball, right side, right at Forsyth, picks it up and throws him out. The inning is over. So Sierra gets into a wee bit of trouble, but gets out of it. No runs, one hit, one left. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. No score from Camelback. Chevy is the most awarded.
Well, before we head to the bottom half of the fourth, we'll pause here 10 seconds for station identification on the Dodgers radio network. So the uh, Mariners have a new pitcher. Is he a righty or is he a lefty? He's both. Talk about the switch pitcher, and he's got the unique glove. He throws both right-handed and left-handed. The first, Pat Venditti is his name. He's the first pitcher to be righty-lefty since Greg Harris almost 20 years ago. So he's got a glove that he just flips it around depending on whether he's going to pitch lefty or righty. He's facing Justin Turner, and so he'll throw from the right side. Turner hit by a pitch in his first at bat. And did he deals? It's a strike, nothing in one. Kyle Waldrop is the new left fielder for the Mariners. Well, he throws lefty and righty. There's another story about that. The 0 1 breaking ball, ground ball right back to Venditti. Picks it up and throws to first. Turner's retired, one out. Well, on this sandwich, he has those that are watching. He has one of the strange, strange gloves that you will ever see because he uses the same glove. It's not like he calls timeout, wants a different glove. Well, normally, you look at gloves as okay, it has a webbing. Well, his has a webbing, and he's out there throwing right handed, so he has the webbing. It's on the left side, the thumb side. But then there's another webbing that's over on the little finger side. And the little finger's not so little. So if you see that glove on the bench, you will not be confused at all as to whose, glo whose glove it actually is. Remember when we were kids, we'd put our names on the glove. Venditti, who, who's been able to throw right-handed and left-handed since he was three years of age. So this is nothing uh, breaking ball inside and high. One ball and no strikes to Franklin Gutierrez. So this is no novelty. This is something he's done essentially his entire life. Yeah, he's out of Creighton University. Missouri Valley Conference. Breaking ball for a strike. And it's one and one. And it was not a novelty in, in college either. He went 21 and 8. His ERA was barely above 2.5. And he had 13 saves on top of it. Third team All-American out of Creighton. No, nobody else. You can do it. One ball and one strike. Gutierrez takes low and outside two and one Franklin who bounced into a double play in his first at bat looking for his first base hit of the spring. <laughs> two and one Gutierrez swing and a foul back two and two 2008 was the first year for Vendetti and the first batter he faced Ralph Enriquez at the plate well they kept trying to outduel one another outthink one another and actually cause minor league baseball to put in a rule that the batter has the last call if there's going to be a standoff as to which arm the pitcher is going to be throwing with the 2 2 good here is takes just outside three and two so the pitcher now must indicate which arm he intends to pitch with on that particular uh, pitch and then the hitter can decide on which side of the plate he'll bat on if he's a switch hitter talk about pace of game. I'll bet right. No, I'll bet left. You throw right up. Three balls, two strikes. Gutierrez grounds it foul up the third baseline. Big slow breaking ball. So the rule then was changed a little bit later on. The pitcher must visually indicate to the umpire, the batter, and the runner which way he will begin to pitch to the batter. Then the batter can choose which side he's going to go on. But you can switch from one pitch to the next, but you have to declare it. On three and two, Gutierrez fouls it off to the right and out of play. Venditti has pitched in Oakland, Toronto, and Seattle. He was a 20th round pick of the Yankees back in 2008. Came over from the Blue Jays last August. Three and two, Gutierrez takes a call, strike three. So Franklin Gutierrez having difficulty the first week or so of the spring. And here comes Yasiel Queen. 
Quig bounced back to the pitcher in his first at bat. And Quig lays off a slow curve. Nothing in one. Van Slyke on deck. We have no score in the bottom half of the fourth. Two out, nobody on. Mariners with the shift on to the left side of the infield. Green with a fly ball to left field. It's on its way and it is gone. Yasiel Green with his first home run and first RBI of the spring. Not much doubt about it. And the Dodgers take a one to nothing lead. Shift or no shift, there's no defense against that one. And the question with Yasiel Puig, I think if you go back to last year, so where was the bat speed? And again, don't confuse the bat speed with swinging hard. Well, there's no confusing with the bat speed here. He gets a ball and it's out away from him. And he stays on it with the swing. Extended, goes right through it. And when uh, Puig flipped the bat, it was so high into the air. By the time he had left the box, it still hadn't come down. It's like Jesse Orozco's glove, for goodness sake. What goes up doesn't always come down. But he got his money's worth on that shot. First home run of the spring for Yasiel Puig. First run of the game. Two out, nobody on. We're in the bottom of the fourth. And Van Slyke. No balls and two strikes. Takes outside and low. One and two. Charlie, that's the swing. And for Yasiel Puig, I'm not talking about just because of a home run. But mechanically, that's the swing that will allow Yasiel Puig to generate the bat speed. And last year, it was like he was feeling for the baseball instead of owning the swing and hitting the baseball. The one, two. Van Slyke swings and misses. And that ends the inning. One run, one hit on the... Yasiel Puig home run. And what a shot it was. With an appropriate and flip to the We'll go to the fifth. One nothing down. Run of the spring. Dodgers with the early one to nothing lead. And on the first pitch of the fifth inning, a ground ball to third off the bat of Steve Barron. And there's one out and nobody on. Yasiel Sierra is beginning his second inning of work. Tyler Smith coming up. Again, the Dodgers have. Ton of outfielders vying for work. And Puig 
They would love to have him simply be the everyday right fielder. Put him in the card every day. Now it's up to him. And from a left field standpoint, so far to this particular point, Andre Ethier has done everything that you would hope he'd be able to do. After a disaster season last year, fouled off the right leg, broken leg. 1-1, one, one, Tyler Smith swings and misses, 1-2. and two. I mean, there are a couple of things about the left field competition such that it is, and you've got Van Slyke in there, Trace Thompson. He's going to uh, start playing this coming week after having the bad back and here's the one two Smith lines one pass Justin Turner headed to the left field corner for a base hit and Smith should have himself a double lost in the corner for the moment Gutierrez gets the ball back to third base but not before Tyler Smith arrives with a sliding triple ball hit down into the corner this ball was smoked Breaking ball, they got too much of the plate. The air is nose, he's gonna have to dig the ball out of the corner. He missed the cutoff man. It was not gonna relay and get there any more rapidly than what it did to begin with. Smith can run a little bit on top of it. And now the Dodgers bring the infield in for Zach Shank, who takes a ball low, one ball and no strikes. Gutierrez was shaded toward left center, so he had a long way to go. Now Shank pops it off to the right. One ball, one strike. But that left field competition, as you mentioned, Ethier's looked real good and watching him run yesterday. Dodgers had to be thrilled with that. Here's the one-one to Shank. Strike a fastball, one and two. Athier's got a lot of dough coming in this year's contract. And then you throw into the mix. A guy like Andrew Toll still has options. Here's the one two. Ground ball diving stab by Bellinger. Steps on the bag. Robs Shank of a base hit. Cole Smith at third. A spectacular play turned in by Cody Bellinger and there's two out. Well we've talked about it the smooth defense and for this ball it didn't seem like there was a chance at all it's going to be hit very sharply and it looked like it was going to get past Bellinger but Cody's just diving to back hit. he has been so smooth and so reliable with the glove is really amazing and quick reflexes with the infield drawn in now two out Gerard Dyson coming up and he's 0 for two speedy left handed hitter takes low one ball and no strikes. Check out the 2017 Chevrolet Silverado at your local SoCal Chevy dealer today. Chevrolet, the most awarded car company three years in a row. Chevrolet, find new roads. One ball, no strikes to Dyson. And the pitch, swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Bellinger at third base, or at first base, is just a long, lean, left-handed, quintessential first baseman immediately a guy like John Olerud comes to mind outside of the fact he doesn't wear the the helmet on the field as Olerud did you watch him defensively quite a bit like John Olerud and a ground ball to second base and Sierra is going to get out of the mess thanks in large part for the outstanding play turned in by Bellinger no runs one hit after four and a half Dodgers one nothing the Lexus Command.
2017 Dodger season tickets available now for a limited time only enjoy exclusive benefits and great savings starting as low as $13 a game or for greater flexibility while enjoying exciting matchups and promotional nights purchase a mini plan visit dodgers.com slash tickets Dodgers with a one to nothing lead on the Puig home run in the fourth Pat Venditti and now Keek Dean Keekeffer. And with the Cardinals organization, Mariners picked him up off of waivers last year. 26 games of the big league club, his first really appearance at the major league level last year. He was born in Louisville. He lives in Louisville and went to the University of Louisville. And he will be facing Cody Bellinger. Bellinger, of course, uh, that spectacular play. Robbing Zach Schenk of an RBI double and keeping the Mariners off the board. Bellinger struck out swinging in his first at bat and a ground ball to the right side into right field for a base hit. The last two, three minutes have been pretty good to uh, Cody Bellinger. Makes the diving stab, robbing the Mariners of a run and hits a lefty and Strokes a base hit to right. Yeah, stays in there against Kikheffer also, who kind of slings the ball. Austin Barnes coming up. Were you good in math? Not particularly. Mm. You? Well, I felt like a dummy. Even more so last night, talking to a mathematician friend. Mm -hmm. Learn something about baseball. Is he all want a swing and a foul tip that gets a piece of the catcher, Steve Barron? And it's nothing in two. So a mathematician last night at a uh, function I attended told me the difference from a mathematics standpoint, the four-seam fastball versus the two-seam fastball. And we will bring it to the formulation that we are assuming that the four seam fastball is 90 miles an hour or more is thrown. And this gentleman, Marv Benninger, has, has written math books. And he has a book out about how you look at different stats. He kept for throwing over to first base. Bellinger back standing up. But a four seam fastball versus a two seam fastball that four seamer is 30 inches in front of a two seam fastball. So in other words the four seamer will get there. The O2 is high one ball two strikes. 30 inches is the difference between the four seam fastball thrown at 90 miles an hour and the two seam fastball which is going to go a little bit slower because it, it's going on a different angle. It's either tailing or it's sinking. But I was surprised that, that the differential was about 30 inches. It will be on you more rapidly if you're the hitter looking out the four-seam fastball. The one-two foul back to the screen. The four-seam fastball remains up. The two-seamer mm -hmm. tends to drop. So it takes a different angle. The, the two-seamer does. It's, it's moving more often. But, but I was a little surprised as to how, how you take it mathematically. Now, how he did it, I did it. <laughs> He started to explain it. And yeah. the, uh, the, why, X, why the X over the Y. And yeah. Followed by a why. <laughs> why bother? But I thought it was very interesting. The one, two, foul back and out of play. <laughs> now, if you're in a slump, I don't know if it's really particularly yeah. good reading because in a slump, you, you don't want to be you don't want to bring any more negative thoughts than you have. You don't want to bring a calculator no. to the batter's box. But but Marv is here at the ballpark and he's bringing it. I did not have a chance to uh, to pick it up prior to the game, but uh, some light it, reading. It, huh? it, it, oh. Here's the one two and a fly ball to left field heading on back is Waldrop and in front of the wall a couple of steps on the warning track he tracks it down Barnes retired that's the first out of the fifth. <laughs> when you're reading a book and you're holding a book in one hand and a slide rule in the other you know you're overmatched. <laughs> Batting average, I'm okay. 
ERA. I mm -hmm. got to figure it out. Yeah. OPS and some of this other stuff. Huh? Brett Eibner is the batter. There's a strike, nothing in one. It's the old question. Can he play? Yeah. Well, the only thing that I know about coming up with uh, an answer on how to to go through the first step of all this is to walk up to the blackboard. And it better be a real big blackboard. Eibner takes outside. Back in the days when there were actually like blackboards and chalk, you knew you were in trouble when you had to report to school early to clean the erasers. Mm -hmm. I was real good at that. That was as close as I came well, as a that mathematician. Was, that was one step above being smacked with an eraser. <laughs> there were those times, too. Here's the 1 1. There's a strike, one ball. And two strikes. The Dodgers a 1 0 lead, one out, one on. Bottom of the fifth, a Puig home run in the fourth. Urias today. No runs, no hits in two innings, two strikeouts and a walk. Romo. A hit and two strikeouts, and Yasiel Sierra has apparently finished his two innings of work. Eibner fouls it off to the right, and giving chase and running out of room is Danny Valencia. Can he play? Culberson on deck, Forsyth to follow. Now the one two, Eibner. Grounds it slowly to short. And a collision between the third baseman and the shortstop is a result everybody is safe. Zach Shank, the third baseman, kind of tried to step in front of Taylor Motter, the shortstop, and they ran into one another. Motter eventually would get the ball and by that time, Eibner would beat the throw. Hello, my name is uh, such and such, and by the way, I play third base, so that's okay. I play shortstop, so stay out of my area. The error goes to the third baseman, Shank, for interference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On his own guy. That would be an automatic first down. <laughs> so E5 and the Dodgers first and second, one out. Culberson coming up. Logan Forsyth on deck, then a ground ball to the right side. Where Valencia, the first baseman, picks it up, an underhanded toss to the pitcher. Kikai Verhid makes the play. Now second and third, two out as the runners advance. At Forsyth. 0 for 2 this afternoon is bounce to second, bounce to third. Right handed hitter. Takes a strike, it is nothing in one. For Forsyth, the new Dodger. Side and low, and it's one ball, one strike. Yeah, originally signed by the Padres at the University of, of Arkansas. Then the Rays made a deal 2014 to get Forsyth. One and one, second and third, two out. Forsyth takes inside and low, two and one. You talk to scouts, and they'll tell you that Forsyth, Forsyth basically is a line drive hitter. Gap to gap. In other words, he doesn't try and pull the ball a great deal, or for that matter, go the opposite way, but he can. The 2 1, a swing and a miss, two balls and two strikes. But normally, a discerning eye, good balance. And when he finally got the chance to play at the big league level, he really came through. 20 home runs, 52 runs batted in for the Rays last year. The 2 2 in the dirt gets past the catcher to the backstop and in the score is Bellinger. 
And the Dodgers take themselves a 2 0 lead. Steve Barron, the catcher, the pitch was in the dirt. And Barron off the glove. And yeah, he the did back. try and slide out and get the ball. But not quite far enough with the glove. The Dodgers will get a gift run. So the wild pitch. And now Forsyth takes call strike three. And that will end the inning. One run, one hit, one error, one left. Two nothing Dodgers. We go to the sixth. Dander out of West Hills, Josh Raven making his third appearance of the spring. He has pitched two innings this spring, given up three runs, walked two, struck out two. Out of Chanceworth High is a big guy, 6'5. And throws real hard. Just did with a fastball low and outside. One ball and no strikes. Mitch Hanniger on deck. There's a line drive base hit. Headed toward the left field corner, bouncing against the wall. Gutierrez picks it up, but not before Taylor Motter arrives at second base with a leadoff double here in the sixth. Fastball, you can throw it hard, but if you get the big part of the plate, hitters will get the big part of the bat on it, which is precisely what Motter did. Now Mitch Hanniger stepping in. He has struck out and walked the Dodgers two to nothing in the top of the sixth. And Raven misses low on outside. One ball and no strikes. I remember Raven last year. He was in that car accident. Wound up with a broken arm. And his season didn't get much better either. Now the 1 0 is under the knees. Two balls had no strikes. Raven had the suspension for Major League Baseball. Then when he finally came back and got into shape, it, he may have rushed a little bit. He had right triceps inflammation towards the end of the year. Now the 2 0. One hopper to short, picked up by Culberson, throws the first a bit low, dug out by Bellinger. And that's the first out of the sixth. Ball well hit. It took a bit of an odd hop, but Culberson is out, really an outstanding defensive shortstop. That's his, that's his position by trade. Motter held at second base, one out, one on, and Valencia coming up. 
Valencia is one for two. Dodgers two runs and three hits. The Mariners no runs and four. Raven missing a slider down and away. One ball, no strikes. As Valencia checked the swing. John Tumpane, the first base umpire, with the safe side. One ball, no strikes. Raven deals. Fast ball for a strike. I got up there in a hurry. One and one. One of the umpires today, second generation umpire, Mike DeMiro. His father, Lou DeMiro. American League umpire, 1963 to 1982, before he was tragically struck by a car during the season and did not survive. 1 1 is a foul back to the screen. 1 2. So you must have known Lou DeMiro. Yeah, and he, and he was up. a good umpire. He was an umpire that we talk about players getting injured a lot. Well, Lou DeMiro, unfortunately, did get injured a lot. Uh, he was in a collision. Remember Cliff Johnson? Oh, yeah. I mean, he was uh, bigger than Mount McKinley. Well, he ran into Lou DeMiro, who really had hip problems for years as a result of it. Ball strike three. Breaking ball. Valencia frozen. And that is the uh, second out of the sixth. The Ludemiro wore number 16, and his son, Mike, in honor of his father, also wears number 16. And Mike Demiro, one of five children, and he has a brother, Ray, that was actually a major league umpire from 96 to 99, and a very proud papa. Now Mike Zanino stepping in. The Dodgers a 2-0 lead. Potter still at second base after the leadoff double. And a check swing by Zanino, and it's nothing in one. He's walked and bounced into a double play. But the umpiring route, I, I got a glimpse of it uh, three weeks before spring training uh, began. They had two umpiring schools in Florida. Then they combined the two into one. 1-0 one -oh is a call strike on the outside corner, 1-1. One -one. There are over 120 umpires that began in the two schools. One of them at uh, historic Dodger Town, the other one up in Kissimmee. At uh, Harry Wendelstead School is now run by his son, who's a major league umpire. There were 20 jobs open, that's all, in minor league baseball. Here's the 1 1 call strike, 1 and 2. And those camps ran for about six weeks, and I, I went over and watched them one day. It, it is remarkable how hard these people work to get to where they are, how good they are, and how consistent they are. Zanino on one and two inside and low two balls and two strikes to the Mariner catcher getting in position they even set up situations Charlie where one of one of the guys goes and says, look I'm going to start something on the field with a couple of umpires there were there were two guys they didn't know if they're going to actually get the jobs or not so they set up all kinds of things catchers interference runners interference obstruction the whole routine the two two Zanino. And the right field line slicing foul and Bellinger tried to reach for it just about two feet from the sidewall couldn't quite get there. But the umpires every day for six weeks they had they had an exam every day on rules interpretations. They were judged on their demeanor. Um, if someone says something out of line how they handled how they work together. And if you look at umpiring. If you're at a ball game on how the umpires will shift, we talk about players and a cutoff man in the right position. Well, watch the umpires. They have a routine and set responsibilities. The 2-2 two -two Zanino lays off a slider down and away, 3-2. and two. But it, uh, it, it was really something. And you see the eagerness of these people who they know that, that at best when they, they're umpiring a game, they're officials, and how hard they have to work, not only physically, but then to do their homework. Now the 3 2. Zanino fouls it back. And you know, when they're first breaking in at the rookie league level, the A level, sometimes there are only two umpires. Mm -hmm. And they drive four or five hours from one small town minor league city to, an, uh, to the other. And then they get promoted. Sometimes they've even got three. That's a big day. Foul back. And out of play or no. Yep. On a road back as Austin Barnes runs out. 
gentleman behind the plate wearing a Kershaw uniform absolutely butchered that souvenir opportunity. He thought it was easy. And he thought it was easy. He's still trying to explain. No, really, the, the, the hypotenuse of this and the, with the wind and the angle and. No, he boxed it. He boxed it. And the lady, three seats down, has the souvenir. <laughs> Here's the three-two. Zanino, Zanino takes outside ball four. Well, three of the good ones, umpires, retired during the offseason. John Hirschbeck, Bob Davidson, and Jim Joyce. Now here's Kyle Waldrop stepping in. This is his first at bat of the day for the Mariners. Dodgers with a 2 0 lead. Two on, two out for Seattle here in the sixth inning. Raven deals. Fastball high, one ball and no strikes. Steve Barron is on deck. As Walter fouls it off to the left. And it's one and one. Can we also mention that the umpires, when they first come into professional baseball, are not, well, let me put it this way, they're not staying at five star Ooh. resorts. Well, they stay in those motel rooms where you stick a quarter and get a massage a bit. <laughs> And if you're lucky, color television. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's tough. And so when these guys finally make it, and they're, they're the best of the best. Yeah. And there's no question about their commitment. The one, two, high and away, two balls and two strikes. And other sports can make their claim about their officials. But but really to see young umpires that are attempting it, these, these guys were, you know, not professionals. But they spend a lot of money to go to schools for a chance to see them make interpretations of rules on the field and then how they they tell everything that uh, is going to be explained. There's a fly ball deep to right field and that is headed into the Mariner bullpen. A three run home run for Kyle Waldron. Well, the Dodger 2 0 lead has evaporated and the Mariners take a 3 2 lead. On the home run given up by Josh Raven yeah. to Kyle Waldron. Uh, I was going to say, Charlie, is it for Raven? It's repeatability, the release point, the mechanics. So it can be very fluid, but that's just a breaky ball that is left up in the strike zone. So here in the inning is a leadoff double and a fastball down the middle, and this is a home run on a hanging breaking ball. Now Steve Barron is the hitter. The inning began. Motter with a double to left. Hanniger bounced out. Valencia struck out. But Zanino, a career 195 hitter, walks. And then Waldrop gives up the three run or gets the three run home run off Raven. Steve Barron, right handed hitter. On a cloudy day wearing shades at the plate. Has bounced to short and bounced to third. He fouls it off to the right. It's one and two. If somehow Raven can harness that power of him, there's a pitch down and away, two and two. But just watching in, there's some pitches that he actually completes the pitch and follows through. Sometimes the release point isn't quite there. And then he begins to labor, he throws more pitches. The 2-2. Two -two. Fastball outside, 3-2. and two. Tyler Smith is on deck. Urias, Romo, and Sierra combined to go five innings and give up three hits. The 3 2. Swung on and missed strike three. Barron down on strikes. And that will end the inning. But the Mariners come up with three on the home run by Waldrop. We'll go to the bottom of the six. They lead the Dodgers now 3 2.
See, the best players in the world chase a title for their country. And the World Baseball Classic returns to Dodger Stadium March 20th through the 22nd. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash WBC, which gets underway tomorrow morning when Israel, featuring Ike Davis, plays in Seoul, South Korea, against the Koreans at 1.30 in the morning Pacific time. New pitcher for the Mariners is Micah Owings, who the Dodgers have seen in various ports of call. In six seasons, Arizona, Cincinnati, San Diego, went to Tulane and is one of the better hitting pitchers around, which doesn't do him a whole lot of good pitching in Seattle in the American League. Yep. He could pinch it, I suppose. Here's 2-1, which he did quite often in Cincinnati. Delivers a strike 2-2 two and two to Justin Turner as we begin the sixth inning. As they say around Tulane, he's a big old boy. 6-5. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Line to right field, a base hit. There's a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate, and Turner just went with the pitch. Our old friend Tim McCarver would say that was a nice piece of hit. And every other hitting coach in Major League Baseball. I mean, that's not a bad pitch at all from a pitcher's standpoint. Slider away. Turner understands the hits count just as much to right field as they do in any other part of the ballpark. You know, we've been uh, with Turner ever since he came to the Dodgers and just watching him grow on and off the field, offensively, defensively, he's become uh, quite a player. And you and I have had conversations with him well away from the field, from a social standpoint. His awareness of what is going on is uh, right on right on the target. Here's the 0-1, and he's really become one of the team leaders. As Gutierrez takes high and inside, one ball, one strike to Franklin Gutierrez. And, and that title of, of being a leader uh, comes with a great deal of respect, and uh, their respect is a, as a result of taking care of his own business as it goes along. But he's really involved, and he's the epitome of, of team. That's one of the reasons. Oh, yes, he wants to stay home. He's from the Los Angeles area. They're coming back with the Dodgers, and he understands the potential that this organization and this particular team has. He leads off first, one ball, one strike, nobody out. And off the bat of Goodyear as a routine fly, a short left field is dropped by Kyle Waldrop, who had just hit the three run home run, but he picks it up and uh, a force play at second base. That was a can of corn that got dropped. I got it. I got it. I don't, I don't got it. Well, can't blame it on the wind. Can't blame it on the sun. It's been overcast. The, the sun has peaked out a couple of times today, but that's been it. So now here's we coming up. Gutierrez is at first base. Your basic seven six four seven. Uh, the swing was right on the money. Yeah, that is the uh, the power swing. Ignacio uh, Fuey did for some reason last year was just not just not present. Oh, the Dodgers are keeping their fingers crossed. I made the analogy earlier, uh, Charlie, is that last year he, had, he attempted, he being Ignacio Fuey, attempted to be feeling for the baseball instead of letting the ball come to him and owning it. One ball, no strikes, and a ground ball to short. Taylor made 6 4 3 double play and a terrible throw. It goes into right field. Gutierrez will go to third, and Puig arrives at second. I mean, that was first you have a can of corn that got dropped, then he had a 6 4 3 double play that got butchered. The Dodgers have second and third and one out. I mean, that throw's not even close. It's to the center field side, the outfield side. No chance at all for the second baseman coming across now with the Dodgers. See if they can cash in the couple of runs. 
The Mariners had just changed their infield. That was Chris Torres, the shortstop. Trying to throw over to Tyler Smith, who didn't have a prayer. So it's second and third, and here's Van Slyke. And a pop-up to the right side of the infield. Now Tyler Smith is camped underneath it. Makes the catch for the second out. <laughs> so some more changes for the Mariners beside Chris Torres at shortstop. New third baseman is Joe Rizzo. And the new left fielder, I wonder what kind of shoes he's wearing. His name? Chuck Taylor. Boy, if you had a pair of Chuck Taylors as a kid. Oh, you were styling. Oh, man. You were styling. And on the basketball court, they could squeak with the best of them. <laughs> and you better have been able to play if you were wearing mm -hmm. Converse Chuck Taylors. And if you, you couldn't play and you're wearing those, so just yeah. go home. Can't be an imposter. <laughs> <laughs> it got to be the shoes. Oh, yeah. So Chuck Taylor is in left field for the Bears. One ball, no strikes, two out, and the pitch to Cody Bellinger. A strike, and it's one and one. Bellinger is single, scored a run, and has been struck out. And made a sensational run-saving play back in the fifth inning. Mariners three to two. Second and third, two out. Micah Owings delivers. Bellinger with a classic uppercut home run swing. Comes up empty and it's one and two. Yeah, maybe a little bit of an overswing. Now the first at bat today, he, he went fishing for a ball that was elevated just out of the strike zone. Up. Now the one two with second and third. Bellinger rounds it foul. He has that pretty left-handed swing. Just natural oh, left -handed uppercut. swings are pretty. <laughs> There's a couple of left-handers here talking about yeah. it. But he's got that uppercut. And when it goes, it goes far. Is it all a home run already this spring? One and two. In the dirt. Gets past the catcher. And in the scores good here. Isn't that ties it? At three, so the Dodgers get their second run by virtue of a wild pitch. Gutierrez comes in to score. Well, there's been a ball dropped in the outfield. There's been a uh, wild throw in the infield, and now the wild pitch. A little amazing. I think Bellinger is about ready to yell out, ouch. I think he was surprised the ball did not hit him. And so the Dodgers now have tied it. Two and two, Bellinger. Rounds it foul over the roof of the Mariner dugout down the first baseline. Bellinger on two and two. Awaits the pitch from Micah Owings. Here it comes and a base hit in the center field. And the Dodgers take a four to three lead. For Cody Bellinger's second hit of the day. In to score is Puy. We're talking about the swing. Well, this ball is out away from Bellinger. Puy will score coming to the dugout, but not a bad pitch. It's out away, and Bellinger, really quick hands is able to take it and power it up the middle. Good crowd on hand on this overcast Sunday afternoon. 8,240. Well, how about that crowd yesterday at Sloan Park at Mesa, the Dodgers and Cubs? There was not an empty seat or any room whatsoever on those outfield berms. No empty room in a parking lot either. Oh. I'll tell you what, that may have been the biggest spring training crowd we've seen in Arizona since the Dodgers have been out here for nine years. 
Austin Barnes lost one into right field. And there to make the catch is Kyle Waldrop. That will end the inning. But the Dodgers come up with a couple of runs. An RBI single for Bellinger. And retake the lead. It's 4-3 to three as we head to the seventh. A boatload of changes as we go to the seventh inning. And a reminder that today's game is brought to you by Arco. Arco, quality top tier gas for less. Gasiel Puig exiting stage left with a couple of Mariners taking over in right field where Puig has vacated the premises is Henry Ramos. Brett Eibner, who started in center, remains there. Tyler Holt takes over in left field. Josh Spores is now the new pitcher for the Dodgers. Jack Murphy is the new catcher. Darnell Sweeney is a new third baseman. And Okoye Dixon takes over at first. I think we got them all in with uh, no blood on the floor. Spores' first pitch is fouled off to our right. And it's nothing in one. And the hitter is Tyler Smith. <laughs> Dodgers four runs, five hits. The Mariners three runs, five hits, and two errors. Spores delivers a strike. And it's nothing in two. Joe Rizzo is on deck. And the 0-2 on the way. Talk about a wild pitch all the way to the backstop on the fly. Josh Spores. Just a little bit high. <laughs> On the backstop. Pitched single A and double A last year for the Dodgers. There's a looper to shortstop and retreating to make the catch is Culberson. Smith is retired, first out of the seven. Now Joe Rizzo coming up, and we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Dodgers radio network. Charlie Sun Rick Monday coming to you from an overcast and somewhat chilly Camelback Ranch in Glendale, Arizona. One out, nobody on top of the seventh. Dodgers with a 4 3 lead. Josh Spores delivers inside and low. One ball and no strikes. Spores last year at single A and double A, Rancho and Tulsa combined to go eight and five. A 2.81 ERA and opponents hit just 2.14 against him. And a ground ball to the right side at second base. Willie Calhoun picks it up and throws out Rizzo. There's two gone. 
the Spores was the uh, single-A California pitcher of the year last year. Pitched in 30 games, 19 of them starts. Now Ian Miller coming up. Left-handed batter, his first. At bat, fouls it off to the left, nothing in one. If you're just joining us and you're hearing a lot of names from the Mariner side in particular that you never heard of, well, you got good company. This is a split squad Mariner team here. You know, you live your life half empty, half full. This would be the half empty portion of the Mariner roster. They left most of their biggies back. Chris Torres is on deck and a ground ball to first to Koye Dixon will take it by himself. And Spores retires the Mariners in order in the top of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch and the Dodgers with a 4-3 lead. We go to the home half of the seventh inning. The Dodgers four runs and five hits. The Mariners three runs, five hits, and two errors. New pitcher for the uh, Mariners, Jonathan Aro. A R O. Seven appearances last year, an ERA of six and a half. In 11 innings, he surrendered a 340 opponent's batting average. In a word, ouch. Brett Eibner will lead it off for the Dodgers here in the bottom half of the seventh. Aro's first pitch is a big swing by Eibner. Fouls it back to the screen and it's nothing in one. Eibner is 0 for 2. AMPM is the official convenience store of the Dodgers. AMPM, too much good stuff. Side and high, one ball, one strike. We had a dilemma yesterday. Yes. Uh, about the seventh inning of yesterday's game over in Mesa, manager Dave Roberts left. He was not on the bench anymore. And it, it, the dilemma was this, and this is this is journalistic journalism 101, boys and girls. He was leaving to go home. Why? His daughter was in a school play, 10-year-old ever. And he wanted it to be a surprise. So what are you to do? Well, what we do? Nothing. Let him go. 
Fouled off to the right now to play. Got home in time. And Emerson had no idea Dad was going to be at the play. And Peter Pan. And uh, the play is over. There's Dad. And it was a wonderful moment. And he was back, Dave was, on a 6.20 flight this morning. And one of the things he was talking about this morning, so we didn't want to spoil the surprise, because she might have been listening. And Dave would say, look, we're trying to develop, you know, a family atmosphere around the organization. And he said, you know, I'm going to take advantage of that. And, and he did. And it, was, it was just a, a, a lovely moment. And Charlie Culberson off the glove of the third baseman Rizzo into short left field for a hit. And Culberson arrives at second base. But that's, you know, again, that's the atmosphere that this uh, Dodger organization has, has taken. Part of... Dave's personality. It was, it was just a, one of those lovely moments, and I'm scratching my head. All right, so Dave Roberts is not on the bench anymore. We knew. Yeah, we saw him walking down the left field line. But he was like those of us who leave town, try to catch a plane. And he did. Uh, speak for yourself. Wow. That's right. You, you like to drive. No, no, I'm not leaving town. <laughs> <laughs> what time's your plane? We're doing better today than yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. Dodgers with a 4-3 lead, one out in the bottom of the second. But it was just a sweet little moment. And only Calhoun with a base hit. And a short right field, rounding third on his way home is Culberson, who will score. Jay Baum, who was just injected into the lineup at second base, couldn't make a clean play. And Calhoun, there's no question about his hitting skills, knocks in the fifth run of the game, and the Dodgers lead it 5-3. to three. Yeah, Two balls back-to-back -back have been hit very, very hard. Getting back to not just Dave Roberts, but this has been a family atmosphere. So one of the things that Sergio Romo was talking about when he's, he's joined now, this, this ball club that he used to look at, as competition once he put on the giant uniform grew up again as a Dodger fan. And now the hitter Tyler Holt takes inside one ball no strike. But I think you look overall a happy family. Makes a happy player. Here's a strike. One ball, one strike. And that goes into that whole question about chemistry. Winning produced chemistry. Chemistry produced winning. I think you have to have both. And people will always say, oh, what about those A's clubs? Yeah, well, they, they were. And, and, and here, when you bring that here's up. Here's the part of it. I was there. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, the, you heard a lot about it. But. That's just like Reggie. Reggie would come out and say some things about Charlie Finley. All of a sudden, boom, it's going to be the headlines. You know where Reggie was 15 minutes later? He was in the locker room on the phone talking to Charlie in his office in Chicago. And the Oakland A's, yeah, they battled, but it was like a family. You know, I can say something to my little brother, and I can punch my little brother, but you better not. But I uh, 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 can't wait to press you a little more on the swing and aims. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily bats or fists, well, but it, it, they were swinging. Yeah. Uh, because when people talk about chemistry and whatever, the A's are the team that they always refer to. Well, what about the A's? They were an exception to the rule in that regard, were they not? Uh, well, they were, but, but, but the game itself, quite frankly, I'll be honest right here, it's about the only place you could go get away from Charlie Finley. <laughs> I mean, once the game started, you were on your own. And when Finley was in town, he was seated in the first row behind the dugout. He had a phone to the dugout. Well, the dugout was only three feet away. Holt on three and two, bangs a base hit into right field. 
Uh, Willie Calhoun will hold at second base. Yes, but there were, you know, strange personalities. Uh, some of them were like uh, oil and, and water. They, they did not mix. It didn't matter how hard you were going to shake the canister. They were not going to blend as long as it wasn't nitro and glycerin. And had, and had different personalities. But once they got onto the field, I think any locker room, if you walk in and you don't know the inside jokes and you don't know the team, I think any locker room you might walk into and say, wow, do those guys really get along? Now the hitter is Darnell Sweeney. Takes out inside and low one ball, no strike. Because there are personalities, not just individual personalities. Teams take on a personality. And the one that we're seeing with this Dodger ball club right now, I'll tell you, it's delightful. And uh, over the last several years, it hasn't always been that way. Uh, no. <laughs> but, you know, in my time, for instance, with the Yankees, and they were the Bronx Zoo, and all of the, the hubbub around that, the Bronx Zoo, very much like the swing and A's. And bottom at second base. By Jay Baum and what should have been a 4-6-3 double play. This Mariner defense late in the game has been indefensible. So the Dodgers get a break. They've got the bases loaded. Sweeney is aboard. And Henry Ramos coming up for his first at bat. The, one, the, the unifying thing, the Bronx Zoo, very much like the swing and a collection of personalities. The unifying factor in those days with Nettles and Munson and uh, Goose Gossett, you were talking about Cliff Johnson earlier, Reggie. The unifying factor was they couldn't stand George. And so mm. when they came to the ballpark, they had something that they could unify around. Ground ball foul off to the left, and it's nothing in one to Henry Ramos. Totally agree. And then, then they would 25 players, 25 cars in those days, not the town cars. But once they got to work. But I'll say this, you know, George, who I, I guess first met in late 70s in Cleveland, was. Was as smart a guy, showman, baseball guy, that I've seen. There's a ground ball up the first baseline. And the throw at first base from Valencia. So it wasn't either. It was Dario Pizzano. Yeah, Pizzano was waiting for his pitcher, Jonathan Aro, to get to the mound, but, but Aro was being a spectator for a much too long a period of time. He was late to the dance over at first base, and the defensive problems continue now for the Mariners right here in the center. Jose Miguel Fernandez is going to come up and bat now. So the Dodgers lead at six to three. And both teams now with the not ready for primetime players out there. The Dodgers with a run in the fourth, one in the fifth, two in the sixth, two here in the seventh lead at six to three. Hernandez starts with the open stance, has the leg kick. At one time he looks like a mad stork because he's only on his left leg. That right leg is elevated. And in the center field, drifting on over and making the catch is Ian Miller. Tagging and scoring is Tyler Holt. Third run of the inning, and the Dodgers lead at 7-3. to three. Those are little things also with uh, Jose Miguel Fernandez. Now, that might get him going. That was an excellent bat, trying to keep the ball off the ground. He winds up hitting it well, and sacrifice fly on top of it scores the run. Dodgers seven runs, nine hits. The Mariners three runs, five hits, and three errors. Let's go, <laughs> you 
just thinking back to some of those clubhouse scenes in the Bronx Zoo. And Greg Nettles, after Sparky Lyle had been traded the previous year, he was Cy Young Award winner. Greg Nettles said, up oh, from Cy Young to Sayonara. And uh, Goose Gossage in the middle of a temper tantrum about George, surrounded by a bunch of reporters. I don't remember what he was screaming about at that point, but I don't care. Take it up to the fat man. Made for good headlines. Don't win many friends that way. No. Pitch in the dirt. As Sweeney now goes to third base. Ramos goes to second. Three in here in the bottom half of the seventh. Oh, well, some things with, with New York have been unique over the years. It was two days ago was the anniversary of Kekic and Peterson. You guys can look that one up. <laughs> one of the more interesting trades in baseball history. <laughs> and Okoye Dixon pops it up to the right side. Jay Baum is there and he makes the catch. And that ends the end. <laughs> we'll go to the eighth. Dodgers seven to three. Another change for the Dodgers. Stetson Ali, A L L I E, is now in right field. Henry Ramos moves from right field towards center. As we go to the eighth, and the Dodgers comfortably in front, seven to three. Dodger spring training always live with the MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. Chris Torres is leading it off for the Mariners in the eighth. As Josh Spores in his second inning of relief delivers his first pitch of the eighth. Long outside one ball and no strikes. The 1 0. Chopper to first. Nice backhanded stab by Foye Dixon. It was one of those do or die. Hops that he fielded flawlessly. One out. A lot of players will say that it's one of those plays you either pick it or eat it. So if, you stay, if you stay back and, and let the bounce play you, you may be eating soup through a straw, or you'll have a bruise. And here he is, Chuck Taylor. Well, you got a 
guy named after a sneaker and you have a guy behind the plate for the Dodger named after a ballpark Jack Murphy. And a ground ball in the hole it's short backhanded throw to first nice play by Mike Ahmed in for Culberson to get Chuck Charles Demetrius Taylor. Even the Chuck Taylors couldn't beat it out. Two out. And Dario Pisano is the batter. Left handed hitter. Slightly open stance, takes a strike, and it's nothing at one. Right, nothing in two. Well, all three places that you played with the A's, the Cubs, and the Dodgers were all high-profile teams. The Cubs weren't terribly great, but they always garnered mm -hmm. a lot of attention. And with the Dodgers, of course, speaking for themselves, and, <laughs> and the swing and A's. And sometimes, you know, when you see teams from Oh, name any town, not a big city. You go about your business, you go, you play the game, you go. But in Oakland and L.A., as it was in New York, sometimes you forget or maybe you realize too much that what goes on inside the room or on the field becomes a national story every day. I'm not sure it's good or bad, it just is. Scores, delivers, and Pisano lines one into the glove of Corey Dixon at first base. That will end the inning. Got off the hook naturally. <laughs> Bottom of the eighth, we hit seven to three Dodgers. Chevy is the. A little bit of fun of the old ball yard as we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Dodgers seven to three, and the Mariners have a new pitcher, Dylan Unsworth, who spent his time making nine starts at Double A in the Mariner organization last year. A 116 ERA and opponents at 241 against him. Jack Murphy leading it off. He takes a strike, nothing in one. By the way, Unsworth is from South Africa. 
And he had been selected at the age of 16 to attend the MLB Academy in Italy. They're saying low, one and one. So he has competed internationally, including with the South African national team at Barcelona. He has an additive incentive to try and get to the big leagues. Here's the one one Murphy swings and misses It's one and two and it comes down to economics. He said the one thing I want to do is I want to be able to fly my entire family over the states. He said, but to do that I've got to get the big leagues and afford those tickets. That's a long flight. The one two inside and love two and two which is more expensive the uh, the plane fare or the download of all the movies. Ooh. I think it was 2009, so that's what eight years ago. First time we got a chance to see uh, Araldus Chapman. Here's a 2-2. Murphy swings and misses a breaking ball. He's down, one out, and nobody on. And the first team he would face in the World Baseball Classic was South Africa. You know, it just wasn't a fair fight. The Chapman who had. At that point, this mysterious figure who could throw about a thousand miles an hour. And these poor little South Africans are trying to, it was, once they heard the hiss of the fastball, they wanted to go home. But again, what, one of the things that the WBC whole purpose is, is to spread the game around the world. Stetson Ali, the hitter, and he tries to Check a swing, but went around on a breaking ball. Nothing in two. And I remember one of the Cuban officials after Chapman's first appearance, and he's throwing 100 miles an hour. Check swing, broken bat. Grounded to first. Ali is done. There's two out. And how much do you think you Americans would pay for uh, Araldus Chapman? Response was, I don't know, but I'll pay for the boat. He didn't find it as funny as some others did. Two out. And Mike Ahmed made a nice defensive play in the top half of the eighth, his first at bat of the afternoon. Right handed hitter, open stance. Pitch is high, one ball, no strikes. Toyota's one for everyone sales event is going on now. It's a perfect time to get low financing and great lease offers on every car, truck, or SUV. See your Southern California Toyota dealer today. They make it easy. The sun has finally popped out. At 3.28 in the afternoon, the first time we have seen sun in the Valley of the Sun today. It's been comfortably cool, overcast sky. So, in terms of dealing with fly balls, the sun's not been an issue. Wind has really been non existent. Ahmed fouls it up the third baseline where Chris Woodward, who was a good player in his days, and a lot of time in Seattle, tosses a souvenir into the stands. Dodgers seven to three on a day that Urias went two innings, no runs, no hits, two strikeouts and a walk. Thirty nine pitches, 14 in the first inning, then 25 in the second. He was done. Romo, one inning, 14 pitches, 11 strikes. Yasiel Sierra, first time we saw him, two innings, no runs, two hits. Raven had difficulty. But Spores has pitched well and will go to the ninth as Ahmed swings and misses down on strikes. Seven to three Dodgers after eight. Hey, Metro PCS. And
New pitcher for the Dodgers as we go to the ninth. Your first look at Andrew Istler. 5'11", 175. Went to school at Duke. And he was a 23rd round pick in 2015. Last year, spending time in Ogden and Great Lakes. He had an ERA of under one. 18 appearances in 27 and a third inning. Fastball slider changeup. Well, this is the first time we get a look at him. Fastball outside, one ball and no strikes. I actually saw him the other day while you were back home vacationing. <laughs> Go get my refrigerator fixed. So what's your angle for your flight tonight going back? Just want to make sure it's still working. It's still working. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 1-1 one -one that's outside, 2-1. Yeah, if your refrigerator is running, you better catch it. Yeah. Maintenance. Maintenance. So you saw Isler and fastball slider changeup. If you had cared, you would have been here. I was here in spirit. The 2 1. Strike on the outside corner, 2 and 2. No, he's very impressive. In fact, uh, he worked Thursday while you were probably having a mint julep somewhere. Checking on my. And he pitched, uh, he pitched <laughs> against the Indians. He went 1 2 3, had a strikeout. Here's the 2 2. But one outside, 3 and 2. Now, we hear about Isler. Not to undersell anything at all, but. And it means a lot for baseball in, in the parlance who say, well, he works both sides of the plate. On three and two. Fouled off to the right and out of play. The hitter is Mike Zanino. Because we were talking earlier at the start of the game, Julio Urias, who, who worked the first two innings and did not give up a, bit, a hit. He walked one and had two strikeouts. We mentioned as a kid, his father really presented him with that idea. look you need to throw the ball inside learn how to throw it comfortably inside so when you, you say that he works both sides of the plate that means okay he can go inside and outside equally as well on three and two again Zanino takes a call strike three and yeah, so he came back inside Zanino Zanino wasn't really looking for it in there he thought okay fine he's just going to try and throw a strike try and put the ball into play but the ball just tails back in. That's a that's a terrific pitch and a lot of movement on it. Kyle Waldrop who hit a three run home run off Josh Raven. That was back in the sixth inning providing the Mariners their only runs of the game fouls it off. It's nothing in one. Dodgers with a 7 to 3 lead, one out of the ninth. Walter fouls it back, and it's nothing in two. I'm going to write that one down, by the way, and use it. Which one? I need to check on my refrigerator. <laughs> I'm not smart enough to make that up. <laughs> it's true. I hope it's working tonight. Here's the 0 2. And outside one ball, two strikes. Now, here's a, a, a well, I'm watching Isler, and we're almost the same age, and he reminds me of a, a hard throwing right hander from late 60s, Dick Selva. Mm -hmm. oh, not, not long, but lean, throws hard. Dick, a California boy who, who threw much harder than his physical appearance may lead you to believe he's going to throw. Which is what Isler reminds me. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Call strike three. So he has struck out the first two batters. And both batters, here's, here's a key to look at. When you see a pitcher come into the game and he strikes out guys, and, and the guys look surprised, they look shocked. Well, Zanino did. On a pitch that came in, and, and you look there, the reaction of Waldrop. He thought that ball was well inside, but the movement of the pitches. So, we're one out away from putting this one into the box. 
Isler with a breaking ball for a strike. Nothing in one. So we saw the Smith Barth yesterday, and he's opened some eyes here. And now Isler doing the same thing this afternoon. Asked uh, Dave Roberts this morning, what do you know about Smith Barth? Three weeks ago. Did nothing. I said, have you had a chance to actually spend any time with it? Said, you know, good job, nice play, nice pitching. So, a couple of works in progress. Shea Spisbarth. And Isler with a ground ball to short. Mission accomplished. And that'll end the game. As Ahmed throws across to Koye Dixon. And the Dodgers have beaten the Mariners this afternoon, 7-3. to three. For the Dodgers, seven runs, nine hits, no errors. They left five men on base. For the Mariners, three runs, five hits, three errors. They left four. Josh Raven wins it. Micah Owings takes a loss, a game that took two hours and 32 minutes to play. So that's a wrap for us from Camelback Ranch. Those of you on Sportsnet LA, join us again on Friday as the Dodgers face the uh, Rangers right here in Glendale. First pitch at five after six.